What up, everybody, and welcome back to the Narragen Report. Brian, I saw the first two episodes, Brian, and I was immediately, when Scott first spoke, I was immediately taken back to where I was in, on Saturday night, uh, Saturday mornings, uh, cartoons around 11, 11, 30, I think is when it started. But uh, I was just, it was nostalgic, right? That's all I can say. And they, they didn't miss a beat. Other than a few things, uh, just Rogue, Rogue. Her voice didn't sound like the the younger version of Rogue. I'm interested in, in hearing, Brian, your thoughts on the dialogue in this. This is a very dramatic X-Men animated series, I think. Your thoughts? I think they achieved recapturing the spirit of the show uh, 30 years later. So, you know, we could, we'll say Bo DeMeo's name certainly from a purely writing and and uh creative standpoint because we don't know the details of his firing which we believe was not related to the show but more to something else but yeah the, i think the the scripting so far is very true to what i remember um the 90s show i mean the individual characters feel like the individual characters like their personality like this is not a show where you would be wanting to say, hey, oh, hey, that's a really cool new spin and take on you. you what you want, this is continuity. Yeah, you yeah. want them to feel and act the way you remember. And so I think that was achieved uh, in this. I think the the stakes, the plotting, I think all feel very true to 90s X-Men. Um, I So the voice thing, it's funny, I agree with you. I was actually thinking about when they announced that all the voices were coming back and, you know, time is time i mean it's 30 years i was curious to see how much they would change because people may not know this but frank welker who voiced megatron and starscream among others in transformers generation one was not brought back to do the transformers movie hugo weaving voiced megatron to some controversy they brought back peter cullen to do optimus prime they didn't bring back megatron after the first movie, they did bring Welker back. And what we found out was his voice was shot just through age. He didn't sound anything like the character. And so I did have that in the back of my mind of like, are any of these characters not going to be able to recapture the tenor of the voice? And they are a little different. Like I even think Cal Dodd is Wolverine. It's not quite as... Not quite, but it's still there. He's like 90%, which I think is impressive given the age, yeah, yeah, yeah. but he's not quite as growly as the as the original one. And and Rogue, you're right, isn't quite as sugar, like husky yeah, as she yeah, was yeah, in, yeah, the, yeah. in the original in the original show. Now Storm, I thought, sounded pretty darn like Storm and to Scott, me. Scott, even though that's Scott not the original pretty much the same. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's crazy to me, right? Like they found somebody that can really like replicate his voice. Yeah. Because the other people have passed right. away, right? Yeah, you're right. That's the one that the change they had to make. So that's a pretty good replication. Beast sounded we all haven't heard much. He sounded slightly different to me. Um, but like he didn't he didn't have much to say. And then we don't have the background as much with like Bishop, this morph. So they kind of have some white space yeah. there. Magneto sounded great. Yeah, yeah, Magneto sounded perfect. It is unbelievable to me to see if they, if this was real life like actual mutants who are people who are different living and co coexisting given the issues we have today so how they or how they wrote this or they've written this is messaging brian but believable messaging yeah, sort of. You know what I'm saying? You know what well, I'm trying to say? Well, it's also a period piece too, right? This is X-Men 97. It's not X-Men 2024, right? So you yeah. have to, if you're going to, and I would argue that X-Men has always been about messaging more, in, in some ways more than comics have been. It's, it's very much about social norms and sort of exclusion and discrimination. I mean, that's at the essence of this. Yes. But yeah, you do have to make it like of the 90s. Like that is kind of the challenge right i know everything 90s is back right like 90s fashion is back like everywhere you look it's 90s so they do have to kind of recapture that but yeah you're right i mean there is a there is a poignancy to magneto giving that speech and then you see the mob mentality turn on the government and he kind of he delivers sort of that mic drop of like see 
The <laughs> second you do anything that seems like you're kind of on our side, look what happens to you. You join the ranks of that. So, yeah, no, I, I was I was very pleased with the first two. I was, you know, I remember one thing I remember from the 90s show. I don't know what you're, you're more visually attuned, especially in the animated world than I am to this stuff. But mm -hmm. I remember in the 90s thinking the animation of that show was very distinctive like the way the characters were drawn and moved versus like gi joe or versus like other or transformers or shows that had yeah. come out like five to ten years earlier yeah. so i was curious when i saw the trailer i was like okay they're definitely updating the like, animation is not quite what if style but it's not quite what it was Correct. and i was wondering how i'd feel about that so i'm curious like what did you how did you feel? i feel like it generally worked for me I, yes. it didn't bother me it didn't it didn't it take didn't me out of the me. show Okay. No, it didn't bother me. Uh, you can sort of try to sort of point out certain things like Bishop's presence there. He's certainly a new member, but if we're going by X-Men, you know, continuance, he was already there. So yeah. he might have, you know, so uh, it's getting used to that, but that's okay. Uh, hopefully his, uh, he's going to have a mission to do some time traveling to see him do some stuff in terms of, uh, the action that I saw, the action was mm -hmm. great, fantastic. Yeah. And Scott, this Scott Summers, this Cyclops, as we can all agree, is nothing like the, the, the live action Cyclops that they've given us over the years. He's either, been... Either one. Neither yeah. one has been anything that I would say approaches Cy actually what Cyclops could be. It's this show, I don't understand why know, you can't you translate like this. Yeah. I, he, he is... He is human. He's conflicted, right? He's about to be a dad. He's powerful, which is appropriate. Like he he uncorks, you know, the beams when he, you know, and I, I always felt like in the movies they almost like held him back. Yeah. Um, for reasons unknown and made him very square and very boring, quite yeah. honestly. And I'm like, Cyclops doesn't have to be boring. Yeah. You know, in this version of him where he's trying to carry on for Charles Xavier, but then is, feels the pressure from Gene to, like, leave the X-Men. Like, they're giving him some dilemmas. We should feel about Cyclops the way we feel about Captain America. Almost. Yeah, that's a good analogy. He, he should be up there in terms of his heroics, his leadership, his skills, and his devotion to, to, to uh, Xavier's dream. I was say, I did love... I did... You know, this was, is not a, not a cartoon and a show meant for like to be high on humor, but it, I I did get a good chuckle when Gene came out and was gonna have the baby and Wolverine's got his claws I, out looking for the bad guy, I, and then he makes that face like oh, <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> uh, I did laugh a little bit when Morph was messing with uh, Wolverine and he was chilling up on the tree and he threw some okay. bag of chips in his face. <laughs> They, they, I mean, it's clear that the people in charge of this know what's humor, know what's serious, and and how to take things seriously. Uh, and we're certainly going to be introduced to new uh, 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 mutants, Brian. So far, what, what do you think? Uh, it's, it's just, it's just amazing to me how good this show, and it's crazy because we've been telling them X Men needs to be the focus, and I don't know if they knew what they had in X-Men 97. I mean, it's two episodes in. I, obviously, we're going to get the great, grander plot. There'll be other characters coming. But I think it was very smart in the first two episodes to really focus on the team plus Magneto. Had they brought in Juggernaut and they brought in Saber, yeah, you know, yeah. all right away would have felt like, let's, 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 get, the to let's get comfortable with our, yes. with our team. And then we'll deal with you know, the, the Trasks and the, and, and the Strikers and whoever it's going to be on the other side that we have to deal with. I am fascinated to see because the critical acclaim for this has been unilateral, 100% fresh. Everybody likes it. And the audience score is just about the same. It's in the, in the mid-90s. And they're calling it X-Men, which is what they ought to do. <laughs> now, they, they kind of have like a backdoor here because it is obviously con continued from an, an existing show. But I'm fascinated to see if the reception for this is remains positive through the end of the show. And then you get Deadpool and Wolverine, where you're going to be reminded of the live action version of the X-Men. I hope that if everyone is buzzing about this show, that this is what Disney takes forward into their version of the live action mutants and kind of says like, okay, 
we heard the audience. The audience really wants the update and the spirit of this. And even if they make a ton of money, which they will on Deadpool and Wolverine, that's more like another time. Like that's yeah. another chapter that we're closing out as opposed to let's lean into that version of it, which I think is going to be a little more humorous or a little more, I don't know. Yeah, I think yeah, it's going to yeah, be yeah, a little yeah. more, you know, more levity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wednesdays. Yeah. They, they, Disney loves the Wednesday release. I don't know why they do that like, with, dude, with, the, with, the, with the animated stuff. They love that Wednesday slot, Wednesday or yeah. Friday. Yeah. I agree with you. That, that would have been like would, real nostalgia. Yes. Everybody is watching it and that would have been perfect. But again, I mean, if they really wanted to do it, they should have done like, now that everyone's got like an ad tier, they should have forced us to watch it with commercials just the way we all used to. Way our kids exactly. could have been like, no, this is how it used yeah. to be. This is how a show used to be. And then not only oh, that, they should have put, that they would never do this. They should have run the show like that and then taken it down so that you couldn't go back and watch it, which is what it was when we back in the day. Uh, Brian, I used to record it, Brian. It, that's the thing. You had to do that. I used to record. I used to tell if I if I couldn't be there, if I had to step out because my mom needed me to go do something, and I couldn't get out of it. I had somebody record it because I couldn't miss the X Men. Well, Marvel needed a win. And Certainly, this is, this is not it, like a. This probably doesn't count as a grand slam because of the scale, but it's a win. I mean, now I will say it is a win that comes with history, right? Well, again, similar, you know, maybe more so than Guardians Three, but same idea, like you're seeing people really respond and, and, and seeing the show resonate with the idea of like, Hey, this is something I remember fondly and already had a positive vibe about, and it's not messing that up for me. It's, it's carrying that forward so far. So they still need wins elsewhere, obviously, but it was kind of nice to have like Marvel in the yeah. news and people being like, Whoa, this is, this is good. Like you got to check this out. The sort of thing that keeps the MCU alive. Like when I think about wonder man, and all these other stuff that's going on, that New World Order, Brian, that doesn't sound like Blade. All these other things that could be dope, but doesn't sound like it's going to be. And it's just delays and total reshoots of the whole film because they don't got it together over there. Like I said, you just want them to learn, right? You want them to see, like, look, if everyone likes this, and it's been a while since anything Marvel was truly loved to that degree. Probably, I would probably say, like like I said, Guardians 3, Loki Season 2 were probably the things that got closest. But it's been a while since we they're were buzzing. They're getting like the WB where every once in a while they give you something dope and you're like, oh, snap. Yeah. So you hope they take the message and of kind of like, all right, like what, what did we succeed with here? Like what did we achieve? And it's like you didn't, you, you had the essence of the story and you didn't mess it up. Like you, you preserved it. That's what it looks like they've done. For Kevin Feige, this is Kevin Feige has to take the lead here and get everybody ready for what they need to be doing next and how they should be going uh, about giving us this because we can't go obviously around on the same route with these characters because that would be a humongous. Because even after that, if they give us the X-Men and it's not well received, not even the MC, not even the X-Men 97 cartoon can save them at that point. No, I agree. But I think one thing it's reminding people, like I said, and that's why I think, I think more people, my opinion is more people are going to, with this show fresh in their mind, there's clearly going to be in more seasons because this has already been well received. This is how people are going to interpret these characters in terms of how they should be, if that makes sense. Yeah, so if yeah. you then come with, a gambit who is totally different on live action than this gambit acts. And this gambit is still gambit. Like he's still <laughs> playing and he's still, you know, like I think people will have a problem with that. It'll be jarring to them. So I, I do think if this show continues to be as good as it started, people will be looking for and expecting it. I would hope Disney to be like, look, if we cast and we write, we can come up with all the stories we want, but the essence of the character is right here. This is what people respond to. I'm pretty sure Chad and Tatum is like, I still got a chance. Well, he's, he, we're going to see it. Like, we're going to see it finally for a little bit in Deadpool and Wolverine. And if he's good, Brian, right? if people accept him, who knows? Who knows? He might. Just, <laughs> I'm out, man. I, 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 he doesn't have the vocal chops to pull off that, like what the yeah. animated Rami LeBeau does. Not, I don't see it. 
Let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought. Um, it was uh, also, before we leave off, Ryan, I thought it was very interesting. Magneto is the biggest player of all time. <laughs> Mystique, who else? <laughs> you know, it's just like, and now we know, now we find out he has, I, I, it was probably in the comic books. I'm not sure, Brian, if there was a relationship between the two of them back in the day. I looked at it, I looked at it as Magneto can let her touch him because of his abilities and because she wants that and longs for that he's able to acquiesce to that and accommodate that 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 longing for a touch that's what i saw and i didn't see anything further than that what you thought yeah i agree i agree it's part of what makes magneto one of the most interesting characters in in all of Marvel, to me, in all yeah. of comics, yeah. But you're right; yeah, he is definitely, yes. he's definitely like he's got a part James Bond side to him. Yeah, like, right. He just, he just yeah, let us know. <laughs> yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think. Um, and that James Bond comment, I think Michael Fassbender should have been James Bond. But we'll we'll we'll, we'll talk uh, next time, and uh, we can't wait to see the next episode. And we'll definitely comment on. I don't know if we'll comment, Brian, on the... I don't want to know if we want to get into every episode. I think we want to certainly talk about the impact of the show and how mm -hmm. good the show is. We'll see. But, yeah, let us know in the comment section below, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. The show goes on! Yeah!